Welcome to Tinker Chips Lab. While going through all the stuff laying around on my workbench, I found this Chinese printed circuit board do it yourself kit. Whatever it is, I didn't really find out what it is since, uh, well, you know why I did not find out what this was. I bought it quite a while ago and um, yeah, since I didn't build it back then, I guess I have to do it now and guess what it is doing. I mean, if we take a look at the circuit here at the corner, we can estimate that it is, well, no, we actually can't really estimate anything because this is just a microcontroller with displays which are being processed by a microprocessor. This is a simple power supply circuit and we have a switch. I would assume, looking at this switch on the bottom here, that there is maybe some kind of counter circuitry or some kind of impulse counter but I guess we will see so let's build this thing <laughs> well I hope I have everything in here oh well if I don't we would find anything here at the lab so oh that is quite nice um, the positions on the board, um, the, the parts, the components are all noted with their individual values, as you can see at the resistors right here, which is quite nice. So it, it, that makes it much easier to populate this board. Let's start with those two resistors, which are just two so I would guess those are 10k because I have only two places where I can put two identical in um, and we have a yep, this is 10k let's get this nice whatever it is called in English I have no freaking idea uh, in German we say this is a big bankchen um, it's just some kind of way to make an even bend to your components. This is not really necessary, but it's, it helps populating the board. If, if you would choose the right dimension and not like I did, bend it much too wide. So, uh, yeah, let's get some new 10k. don't want to go through all this fuss and straighten them up again. So let's take this one. This looks much more promising. Yes, this is the right spacing. Ten K. And we have one, two, three, six, one, two, three, four, seven. Oh, that is nice. We have six and one, two, three, four, eight. Okay. Ah, there's there's another 470, 470 ohms. So we actually don't have to control, uh, we, we don't have to check which values we are using. We just have to count how much resistors are available to know which position is the right one. Oh, and I guess I'm going with the old rule of uh, being at education and placing the tolerance rings all in the same direction just for the good looking. It's not really necessary because as we all know, a resistor doesn't have any 
direction. You can place it whatever way you want. But just for the looks of it, I'm going with a uniform uh, direction of the tolerance rings. I'm also going to place the diodes at the corresponding places. Those are always 1 and 4, a 1 and 4, 1, 4, 8. Should be 3. And I have 3. Wonderful. Is there anything small left? Not really, no. So just flip this over, give it a little wiggle to press all parts down on the surface of your working space and uh, start by wetting your sponge. Oh no, wait, I'm, I'm lazy today, I'm using this non-wet sponge thingy. Oh, maybe I should... Maybe I should use my new build fume extractor. That would, would be quite a nice opportunity to check if it is working correctly. Um, just wait a moment, please. I hope you're not hearing too much of the humming noise of the fans. And I hope it is working. Not really, no. Not at this speed. Let's give it a little more power. Okay, I see it's a bit too high. It works better. Yeah, it works quite nice. But I have to cut some of the leads because they are just in the way. Trying to place this a little bit more in the center so you can see it better. So the resistors and diodes are soldered. Now we are going on with the little ceramic capacitors. And I guess I am also going to populate the socket for the 80... What is it? An, it's an... What is it? It is an... 8089. So this is going here. This is a thirty picofarad, which is going over here, and this is also thirty picofarads. Ah, and I'm going to populate the twelve megahertz crystal. which is slightly, has a slightly wrong 
footprint. And what, what is that? 10 4, so we have 10 100 nanofarads. Where is it? Are you kidding me? Why would you use such a huge footprint and provide one of those tiny little ceramic capacitors? That is, well, a waste of space. No, don't drop out. You shall stay in there. Please, stay in there. Thanks. So, let's crank up the uh, fume extractor. Next, we are going to... What can we populate? Yeah, like the LEDs. Oh wait, I see. Those are going to be decimal points or um, double points. I don't know what you call those in English. I have no idea. Um, maybe it's a clock. It's a little clock chipset. Maybe I should make a little. Yeah, maybe I, sh I, sh I should make this to a little comp competition. So, whoever guesses what it is, gets whatever. The cropped leaves of the components. Yay! Everyone will go totally apeshit about this. Are those solar bridges? Yes, they are bridges. Okay, I saw uh, we, we have... Oh, oh, and I... Ha, 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 ha. Uh, can you see this? That says hours, minutes, and seconds. So this is definitely a clock. Okay. This is quite nice because I have a great idea what I'm going to do with it. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you. Uh, as I said, I saw we forgot some solar bridges around here. So let's just take a look. It should be about this width. No, don't, don't bow, please. I want it nice and square. Mm, that fits. Yes, it fits. That fits quite nice. Number one. And no, don't don't drop down. And number two. Press it down tightly. And I'm going to bend the leads a bit because those are now flapping in the breeze so I don't accidentally lose them before they are soldered. So what can we do next? Oh, there's another one. I didn't see that one. And this should be a rather thin lead. As you can see, it is right beneath the uh, minutes indicator. So I have to use a really thin lead, like from one of those resistors. And we are going to need this with oh, 
on that board quite well. Nice. So, next we could populate the transistors. Here we have, what is that? 2S8550. Maybe I, wait, I'm going to check how high are those LED indicator displays. And it's quite interesting to see because if I am able to make those the highest of all components on here, that would make it much easier to use for what I am spontaneously intending to use this. Yes, right now they are the highest. And if I place the microcontroller, yes, this is working out quite nice. So I have to bend the leads of the transistors quite a bit, but uh, well, it's just a jelly bean part. I guess every BC550 or whatever will work quite nice if one of those ever lets the magic smoke out. This is the 7805. Well, I'm not quite satisfied with the suction of my uh, fume extractor. So, I mean, it is really strong, but um, I guess it's just a much too small intake. So I guess I have to build some kind of triangular nozzle for it, which pr um, protrudes like some kind of funnel. Hmm, maybe I'm going to build something like that and try it out. So I decided to not use the socket for the microcontroller. Um, instead, I'm going to solder it directly because, as I said, I want it to be as flat as possible. And uh, with the socket, the micro microcontroller would be a little bit too high. So, well, I don't think it is going to break ever. Um, this is 10 microfarad. Am I able to lay this down? Yes, I am. And this is working out quite nice. Ooh. Don't fall down, please. Plus and minus. Yes, that is working quite well. Even though it looks disgusting, if you, also, I don't like uh, flat capacitors, but in this case, as I said, I have to place it uh, on a real small flat surface if I want to use it for what I'm intending it to use. Um, so, well, I guess that is quite okay for that purpose. Oh, and I don't want to forget the 7805. which goes over here. And this big cap, I'm um, 2200. Oh, let's see. I guess it's not necessary. 
Let's place the push button. What I hate about these push buttons is you don't really have any indicator which way you are supposed to put them except for that they are slightly and um, there's a slight more space between two legs compared to the others so this one should go like that if I can make it fit Hey, those fucking buttons. Man, go in there. Thanks. Oh, wait, maybe. Yes, 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 yes. I should, I should place this button on the opposite side, which is no big deal as it's just a button. But I want to be able to control it from the back side. So I am using the back side for the button. And I'm also, as we are just populating the back side, I'm going to populate the um, socket for the battery compartment also on the back side what the heck is that yeah what kind of sorcery is this wait a moment we are not using this Instead, we are using Get out of there! No! use one of those instead yeah that should be working just because this battery socket is broken from the factory you see there is no pin yes you could repair it but also this part of it should go somehow into here I guess or does it does it Oh yes, oh yes, that is working, okay. So maybe I try, yeah, yeah okay, I'm, I'm trying to solder a little button down there. A uh, button, no, not a button, I'm going to solder a, some kind of connection thingy, but how should I do that? Could be fascinating. Let's try. Let's see. Oh yes, it did. Nice. Reverse soldering. Oh, my uh, fuck. I just noticed you possibly didn't see it on camera, which is annoying, as I'm proud of <laughs> getting it to work. But, oh well. So, 
So next I'm trying to repair this broken socket by just soldering a wire to the contact which should have worked yes it does This should be perfect. Yes, that's quite nice. Okay. So let's use this big fat cap on the back and place it negative to the side of the board. Negative, not positive. also be quite difficult but maybe yeah I'm doing the old bent trick again just using a little more bending this time and I'm going to solder it after I have soldered this uh, last display thingy here just because I don't want it to be in the way for soldering. So we'll put this away again, put that away and start soldering in all this stuff. First that display That one, and that one, and while we're at it, I should also sort in the microcontroller And the last cap, which needs some bending. And okay, job done. Let's check it out and see what we got here. For that, I have to connect a 5 to 12 volt source. At this point I guess I'm going to use a 9 volt battery. So I'm just getting a battery clip. There I have one. So what will it be? A clock or a counter? And I'm shutting off this annoying fume extractor. Let's 
since I guess we don't need it anymore. You are going back to your parking position. And where is my 9 volt battery? I had one laying around, I'm sure. Stuff is falling, yay. Let's take this one. It is... Seems to be some kind of clock. At least it's counting seconds. Um, okay, what I... Oh, you can't see it. I pressed the button and, well, nothing happened. I guess you can make it stop by pressing the button. Yes, you can. Is it stopwatch? I guess I leave this running for about a day and see what it is saying when we're going back here. See you then. And yes, I was right. It is a clock module which can be controlled by long pressing this button at the back side. Um, I actually wanted to use it for a little like um, steampunk design clock I have hanging on my wall waiting for some kind of digital digital um, waiting for some kind of digital clock module. But I, I fairly quickly I noticed that those little LED displays are much too small for that purpose. So I think I'm actually going to place this right in front of my workbench to have some kind of little time indication.